this is Linda Ellers. Now I'm going to show you how to solder. So you should have your iron plugged in and ready to go. And this iron you want to set to, to 410. It's 410 centigrade. It's not Fahrenheit. Uh, most, uh, when you're melting your solder, you want to be about 650 degrees to 700 degrees. So this is a really good temperature for this iron. Okay, so you've got that going. You've got your gloves on. You've got your safety glasses on. Uh, your smoke absorber on. I'm just not going to turn it on uh, in this case so you can hear me in the video. Okay. The other thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get your sponge for your soldering iron wet. And um, I've got jars of water in my studio and I don't want my students dipping the sponge into the jar because it get, can contaminate the jar with lead. And then I also use this water for the grinder. So I like my students to actually dump the water over the sponge, over the waste basket and just get it wet. Okay, so I've got this. The reason for the wet sponge is we're going to be wiping our iron tip on that sponge. So um, if, you, if you look, as you let the iron sit there and warm up and it's on, this light should flash on and off as it heats and cools. So that's how you can tell this is on. This iron doesn't have an on and off switch. You plug and unplug it. But as it's on, this tip will get darker and darker. And when you use it for solder, you want it to be really, really shiny, just this, this top end right here. Okay. So the solder won't stick to this tip unless it's shiny. So that dark buildup is usually contamination in the air. Flux will turn it dark. So when you go to use the iron, you want to wipe it once on each side. So I'm calling this the tip of the iron. This is the tip of the iron. This is the side of the iron, the top side, bottom side. I want to wipe it once on each side, and when you do that, you can see it gets a lot shinier. Okay, so you want it nice and shiny when you use it. Our first step in uh, soldering is to tack solder your project together. So um, we're going to tack the project together. One reason is so you learn how to tack. We're going to use that technique when you frame, but also the tacking won't melt your sticky backing, the or excuse me, the plastic backing that covers the pattern. And what happens is if you fully bead solder in the jig, that backing actually melt, can melt in parts and it crinkles and then you can't reuse the jig. So when I'm doing a super big project, I usually don't reuse the jig, I just bead solder in the jig and skip the tacking phase. But a lot of these beginner projects, I reuse the jigs, so I want you to tack and dump it out. Also, it will teach you how to tack so that you'll know how to do that for later when you go to put your frame on. Okay, so tacking means you're just, you're just going to stick all the pieces together. So you need to tack every adjacent piece to each other. So, um, and you're looking down here, this green piece, I need to tack to the blue and the other green piece. This green piece, I need to tack to this green piece, this blue piece, the tree piece, and the trunk. Okay, so I'm going to tack in the middle. I'm not going to tack in the jo joints. I want to tack in the middle, so I'm going to hit, tack here, here, here. So I'm going to take my flux, so I need to put flux on the foil to cause that chemical reaction. So I'll do that for an inch or two right there. I won't flux too far ahead because it, once it dries, which is, takes about 10 minutes to dry, it won't work. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up my iron and I'm going to pick it up with my hand over the top so I can hold my iron parallel to the table. So if I pick it up like a pencil, it's hard to lay the iron flat on the glass. And what we're trying to do is have the side of the iron hit and warm, heat up both pieces of foil you're trying to connect. So if I'm connecting these two, it needs to hit, hit, hit the foil on the green piece and the foil on the blue piece. And it's hard to do unless the iron's flat. So I'm going to put my hand over the top. It lets me hold it flat. And I'm going to wipe my iron once on each side. And when I do that, I'm not wiping the tip of the iron. I'm wiping the two sides top and bottom. And I'm not wiping it excessively, I'm only wiping it once on each side, so it's nice and shiny. If you wipe it excessively, it cools the iron, and then your iron has to catch up and you lose some heating uh, heating with it. So when now I'm going to grab a dot of solder, so first you're going to put the solder on the iron, it transfers it to the glass, okay? And you know it's the right temperature if you grab a dot of solder, I'm going to use this bottom side of the iron, and I'm going to grab a chunk of solder and the solder is going to hang. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it, if it splatters off, then the iron's too hot or it's, it's still too dirty. You didn't wipe it on the sponge. So, but it should be able to hang for quite some time there without falling off. So once you get that chunk of solder on the bottom, you can touch down and drag. Okay. 
And when I touch down and drag, I pause to start with so the foil heats up. If I just drag right away, it doesn't give the foil time to heat up. So I'm going to grab a chunk of solder, touch down, pause, and drag. Grab, grab a chunk of solder, touch down, and drag. And I kind of lost that chunk, so maybe I'll, I'll just, it might take a couple chunks. You could take a couple chunks. But I don't want you painting, which is this, that heats, cools, heats, cools, heats, cools the foil. You want to touch down, heat the foil, keep it heated, and drag. So I really get on my case about my students in the, the painting technique. I don't want any painting in this class. My tip was getting a little dirty, so I wiped it once again. So another dot of solder. And again, I'm grabbing the solder with the side of the iron, not the tip. Now here's an example of, I have no flux there. And you can see that the solder also stuck to the glass as well as the foil, so I need to flux there. So I'll continue on with my tacking. If I have a long stretch, I'll tack in two places. Okay. I usually can do this pretty quick, so I could probably just flux the whole thing. Oh, that didn't have flux. And then do all my tacking. But you'll probably need to maybe flux a quarter of it at a time. And I don't like people, some of my students like to put the solder on the top and flip it over and it usually falls off. So you're so tempted to look and see how much solder you got there and then it flips and falls off. Plus it takes twice as long. So it's just going to take you longer and you're going to waste more solder if you do that. I don't have anything against it, but it's just going to take you longer and you might get frustrated with how much solder you lose. Okay, okay so flex the rest of this. If you have, also if you have, like I have a gap here, if you want to make sure your gaps are even and things aren't wiggling before you solder, tape it with electrical tape so your pieces don't move. Um, uh, electrical tape uh, doesn't leave a residue on the glass, comes off easily. If you use masking tape and you leave it on there too long, it leaves a residue that's, that's really hard to get off. So it seems like my iron's getting a little hot here because I'm losing some of the, the solder drop, dropped off. Now that drop that fell there. I don't want to reheat it on the glass because it can crack the glass. These are longer stretches, so I'll, I'll do two, two lines of solder. Now I can reuse that bead on the foil. So glass, again, breaks from thermal shock. So you don't want to reheat the bead on the glass because it can break the glass, but you can use it on the foil. When you heat the foil first, the, the foil gets hot first and heats the glass slowly so it doesn't break from thermal shock. Now you can, if you leave your, your project out in your car in the winter, you want to make sure the glass is room temperature or warmer before you start soldering because the temperature difference between being, between being in a cold car and actually soldering can uh, cause the glass to crack. So usually I will use a blow dryer to warm up the glass if that is the case. Okay. So now I think I've got it tacked everywhere. It looks pretty good. Now I want to dump it out. Okay, so I'm going to put the jig on its side and hold the glass in with my hand until it gets over. And then I'm going to take my hand out of the way. And if it, it popped out, but if it doesn't, you can hit the side of the jig because you're not and get it to come out. Or you can take two of the sticks off to get it to come out. Okay, so now... Uh, we've got uh, the back side of the glass. I usually like my beginners to do the front side, for, solder the front side first. They're like, but yeah, I'm not as experienced on the first side. But the second side, you get a lot more bubbles. So I'm going to take my hands the furthest side away from me. I can see this bends here, so I'll go this way. I want to put my hands on one side, not opposites, because you can see it makes it bend more. On one side, my two hands go, and I rotate it on the opposite side. And then I can, once I lift it, there's no stress on it lifting it, and then I'm going to flip it down. Okay, so now we're going to go on to bead soldering. So I'll start, uh, it's easiest, you're, if you're right-handed, you go left to right, like you're writing a book or reading a book. Um, and if you're uh, left-handed, you go from right to left. So I'll do it both-handed. I'll start with my right hand. Okay. So I'm going to do this whole row. Now, instead of this solder, which is tacked, which is a flat solder, 
What I really want to do is create this mound of solder. It's going to be rounded and it's going to be high. And that's what's going to give the joints their strength and keep the piece together. So flat soldering everything, the piece would probably fall, still fall apart. So you need this bead soldering, you need it to build up. So that's the most important thing we're worried about is the bead forming off the iron. Okay. So now instead of over the top holding the iron, I'm going to hold it like a pencil from underneath and I'm going to hold it straight up. And I can be straight up and I can be as low as maybe like a little above 45 degrees. But if I go too flat, I'm going to get flat solder. I won't build up that bead. So I want to hold it pretty straight. And the most important part is going to be watching the solder form off the iron. So there's going to be a bead or a mound of solder, like a bubble. This I'm just using this as a pointer. So I'll show you that in a minute. I'm not going to start the iron right on the edge because the bubble will form off the glass and then you'll have to clean that extra solder off later. So I'm going to start back about half an inch. Again, I'm going to wipe my iron. And, and wiping my iron, again, I'm wiping the side of the iron once on each side. I'm not wiping the tip. That does nothing. I'm wiping the iron once on each side just to get the corrosion off the tip. Extra solder on the tip is fine. I'm always seeing my students fighting with the solder on the tip. The solder on the tip is good. It actually prevents the tip from corroding. Okay, so now I'm back to, I'm going to start back half an inch. And this is, this is where you're going to watch the whole time. So I'm going to add solder to the side edge of the iron on my side. And you can see that this bead starts growing off of both sides of the iron. But I'm watching this side. So you can see that there's now this, there's this roll that comes off the iron. Okay. I'm going to back up to the edge and I'm going to be, keep going. So I want to keep that bead, bead going. And the easiest way for beginners to do that is to stop the iron, add solder while the iron stopped, and watch that bead grow. Okay. Then move the iron about an inch. Stop the iron, watch that bead grow. Go an inch, stop the iron, watch that bead grow. Go an inch, stop the iron, watch that bead grow. So if you're having trouble as a beginner getting the right amount of solder on, if you're moving the iron too fast, you can always move the iron, you can never move the iron too slow. Slow is always a good thing, but I've seen a lot of beginners, they move too fast and then they can't get, they don't heat the foil, they don't heat the solder, okay? So I'm getting to a joint. I'm not going to add solder near the joint because I'll get too much solder in there. It's fixable if you get too much solder in there, but it saves you time if you don't. So after the joint, I'm going to get that bead back. So as you get better, instead of go an inch, stop the iron, add solder, you can start, let me unroll my solder a little here. You can start adding the solder as you, you can see it as you move the iron. You try and keep that bead the same size rolling off the front of the iron. I'm watching this the whole time. That's all I'm watching. Okay. And as I go, and if I can keep that bead the same size, you can see that this looks a lot smoother than this. Okay. But you got to keep that bead the same size. If it gets smaller, larger, smaller, larger, that's what's going to give you your lumpy solder. We're going to fix that. But as you get better and you get confident in how much solder, how big the bead is, you can start adding solder as you move and keep that bead the same size. Now, I'm not going to go off the edge with the iron because the bead will go off the edge. I'm going to come back and off to the side. So when I finish all my solder seams, I go off in a 90 degrees, or a perpendicular, or an L. So my, my iron's going to do this kind of motion. It's not going to do a V. It's not going to do a U. It's going to be a slow L off to the side when I'm done. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Again, this was the stop and go, stop and go, trying, trying to learn your way through how much of a bead you need. So I'm going to go back over this, okay? So again, I'm wiping my iron once on each side. I'm going to start again with a nice shiny iron. And again, every time you solder, you want the tip of the, you always want to heat the two metals you're connecting. So I need to have that tip go through the solder and hit the foil, okay? So you're not going to ride on the surface. The iron doesn't ride on the surface of the solder. It hits the foil. So now again, I'm going nice and slow and I'm heating the foil and the solder to create this nice smooth bead, okay? 
it's going to take there's more solder in a joint so i might have to slow down there if i have too much i can move it around but i don't lift up the iron i don't paint like this it's always backing up but not lifting up so when you're taking classes for me it'll sound like i'm picking on you the first night but no i'm trying to uh get you rid of your bad habits right away and then this soldering will go way easier for you okay and i don't have to go over that this but most of my beginners will and again i can do that l off to the side and it works better if your iron's really straight when you do that l and it works better if you go nice and slow and again you don't want to reheat those on the glass you want to pick those off with the end of your flex brush or your fingers give them a few minutes to cool okay so now i'll do this next row I'll flex again i gotta flex it and again, if you forget to flux, you can just flux over on top of what you screwed up or what you forgot to flux, okay? And again, just before I pick it up, I'm wiping the iron once on each side. I'm going to say that a lot. I'm going to say solder slower, wipe, wipe your iron once on each side. But now let's, I'm going to do some examples of like, I'll put too much solder on here, okay? So I'll have students who, that's too much solder. It's hanging over onto the blue glass, and then I'll have students who don't do enough solder. So now the solder is really, really flat. Okay, so you got the two ends of the spectrum. Okay, so your goal is when you do a bead and you see flat spots, you go back and you add more solder. You watch again. You're watching your bead form, so I'm watching that and how big it is, and I fill in the flat spots. And again, I finish with my L off to the side. The reason for the L is you can see the excess comes off, otherwise it stays in the joint and you don't get rid of what you want. Well, that's what we're going to do over here. This is really thick. I'm going to wipe my iron again once on each side. We're going to drag this off to the side using our L technique. So I'll start in front of the fat part. I won't start in the fat part because the tip will take forever to melt the fat part. I want to start on the outside of the fat part where there's too much solder so the side of the iron can really grab it. And then I'm going to go a little ways and I'm going to drag some of it off. You see it comes. So let me go back again, drag some more. Back again, drag some more. Back again, drag some more. Okay. And then again, once you get it all dragged out, you can start going over it again to smooth it out. Okay. Again, I need a little bit more bead, so I'm going to add solder on the side of my iron. And that bead got bigger. That's a better size. Again, if you're having trouble soldering, go an inch, stop, add solder. Go an inch, stop, add solder. Go an inch, stop, add solder. Okay, before you start moving along. But once you get better, it's this all-important bead. That's all I'm looking at. Okay. It's always easiest left to right, so I'm going to do this one. I should be okay. I can turn it a little bit. Again, wipe the iron once on each side. I'm going to start back half an inch from the edge. Get that bead going. Let me see if I'll turn it so you can see it's too much of a bead. So we'll come in from the side and we'll use it. Okay. And again, I'm, the tip of the iron is hitting the foil, so it can heat the foil. Okay, I don't like to stop or start in a joint, so I'm going to end before the joint. And I'm now I'm going to go back over this. Again, the tip of the iron is hitting the foil. Now if I decide to, I can end before or after the joint, I can come in the joint and come out and off to the side. There's a little too much solder in that joint. If I want to get rid of the solder in that joint, this joint forms the shape of the letter Y. So this is the top of the Y and this is the tail of the Y. So to get rid of it, I need to drag the solder down through the tail. So I'm gonna start up higher here and I'm gonna drag it. I'm gonna, I need to pause in the middle, heat all the solder, come out and off to the side, shake my iron a little. If nothing comes off, I'll shake my iron a little. Do it again. Now I don't have to go quite, whoops, went back in there. It's not, I don't have to go quite as slow because the solder's always already partially uh, warmed up in liquid. Okay. 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 Now that's really stuck. So we'll, again, I'll clean that part up and I'll drag off to the side. If I don't like the way it came out off to the side, I'll 
try a different direction. And when I do that, I'm, my iron's really straight when I, when I clean up those sections off to the side. And the other thing, if your iron's too hot, it will, your solder will fall through and get really flat. Uh, so if it continuously is falling through, you need to turn your iron down and we'll see when we flip it if there's, I'll show you what a seep through looks like and what that looks like, but I'll rotate it this way. Try this left handed. My left hand's a little shakier, but okay. Wipe your iron once on each side. I'm not going to start or stop in a joint, so I'm going to, I'm doing this, the tree part here. So I'm not going to start in this joint. I'm going to start back, back half an inch. Again, I'm watching that bead the whole time and I'm trying to keep the bead the same size. There. And I don't want to add solder near a joint, so I'll go past the joint, and then I'll get my bead going again. I got extra solder on the glass, but hopefully the, yeah, the, I'll back up, but not lift up. I don't want to do any of that painting, lifting up kind of thing. I'm coming to the end, so I don't want to add too much solder, and I want to stop before that joint, and again, do my L off to the side. Okay, looks pretty good. This is a bit, if you have really wide joints, I've got uh, one a little bit here and one up here. If you have trouble getting your bead going, you can fill, fill it in flat first, so tack it all. You can, you can just tack it, get, fill it in flat, and then bead. It makes it a little easier. Okay, so now you it's sucked up most of the solder it needs to, to get in the joint. Now you need to just fill in the top surface for beading. So I'm going to again get that bead going. I'll back into the joint to make it look a little better here. And again, I'm watching that bead come off the iron, that mound of solder, and I'm not going to go off the edge. I'm going to come back in a slow L off to the side. Okay. Next. So again, if you have trouble, like this is taking a lot of solder, if you, can, if you just want to go through it flat and get it flat filled, you can also do it this way. You don't have to use the tack method. And then go back and get your bead. So now I'm watching the bead. The bead is the all important thing. And I don't want to go too fast. I can never go too slow, but I can always go too fast. And I can back up and do my L, or I can go off to the right at the end. Okay. Just flex it all. The other thing I like to do is I recommend kind of holding your solder like this. If you hold it like this, you get flux on your hands, you get flux on the solder, and the solder can corrode, and then it can age really fast once it gets really cloudy looking then that dirty stuff you want to cut off. You don't want to use it because it can stick to your tip and ruin your iron tip. Okay, so let's again wipe it once on each side, start a half inch back from the edge, add solder on the side to get that bead going. So this is forming a T joint. I, instead of an L, I can go off in a T also, so I can go straight off the end if it makes a T, letter T, <laughs> L, T. <laughs> back over here. We'll do this one. Wipe my iron once on each side. Start back from the joint. Get that bead going. Come up to the joint. I can even go into the joint if I want. Don't want to add too much near a joint. I'll have to clean it up. Add it after the joint. I'm watching the bead. Actually, I don't watch the bead anymore because I've done this for so long. I don't even pay attention anymore. But you'll need to do that. Okay. Back up off to the side. If you go off the end, not a big deal. Just more cleanup. Okay. So don't, you can solder over and over and over. If you play in one area too long, it, the solder becomes hotter and hotter, more liquid and liquid. It will fall through. 
It, it, there's always the possibility it will crack the glass. It can do that if you play in one area for too long. So well, here's another T. I'm just going to go straight off the end. Okay. Get the bead back up to the joint. Uh, now I've got these other joints I'm going through. So don't add solder near the joint. Keeping the bead the same size. I'm going to go straight off the end. Like my iron once on each side. And you don't want to add solder continuously. That's where you get too much solder. It's all in watching how much the bead needs to stay the same size. I'm getting towards the end. I won't add more solder close to the edge. Okay. So I don't think it's a little too lumpy. We're also not going to want too many big lumps near the edges because that's going to require you to, we're going to have to put the frame over there. I'll show you how to clean those up later so they're flatter on the edge. So you don't need quite as much solder on the edge. Okay. So, uh, you can, now you can look it over. You know, I see a little lump there. Again, this is being really picky. I'm going to redo this section a little bit. I think I did that with my left hand. It's not as good as it used to be, I guess, since I had surgery on it. Okay. And then I kind of like if the sun looked, this part looked more even, and I've got these joints coming in. So I'm being real picky. You as a beater don't have to be. I'm going to go over the, just the sun part again. So it looks like one continuous bead. Come off the nail over there. Okay. So most likely you'll probably have again joints with too much solder. You'll have to you'll have to clean up. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm ready to flip it, and I need to get all the globs off. So it, I flip it on so it lies flat when I flip it. So I can use the end of the box brush. Oh, I can use the trunk room. Now, if you're doing a big project, you could stop and clean this side. You could Windex and alcohol, even polish if you're not going to patina. You can even patina it. That's later directions where you could do all one side and then flip it. Let's see if I have enough flux there. Okay. Oops. Okay, so now I'm going to flip it. Oh, this is solder. Again, hands all on one side, and then flip it on the other side, lift it. Worried about this is more solder here. I'm sure it's other way. Okay, now I'm going to solder this side, and this is where you're going to get more bubbles. So this is this is what bubbles are. It's the flux boiling. So on the first side, when you solder the first side, the bubbles boiled out the back side. But now we're on this side; they can't boil out the the front side because there's solder there. So it's going to come back at you, so you have to work out the bubbles. I'll wipe the iron once on each side. Start back a half an inch. So if you get to bubbles, again, you don't paint, you don't lift the iron, you just go back and forth with the irons. If I see something I don't like, I can back up and go over it instead of fixing it later. So that's what I like to do so I don't waste my time going back. I'm getting some bubbles here. They're not real obvious. Sometimes the bubbles show up later. So usually when I solder the whole second side, I go back and there's one right there. 
and that's all it took to get it was to go back over it. Okay, wipe my iron, get the bead going back into the joint. 